Hi, I'm Mark from Valor XL. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to present a short tutorial showing you how to use some of the video editing tools in Microsoft ClipChamp. Now, if you've never used ClipChamp before, I'll include a link in the description below this video for a tutorial that we did a little while back in which we outlined the functionality and the features of ClipChamp. But today we'll specifically be looking at how to use some of these video editing tools for the purposes of manipulating the clips that you use in your finished project. Now I have a project open right now and I've imported three different video clips so that we can experiment with them. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag one of them and drop it down here in the timeline. Now this clip is just a little shy of 12 seconds in length and I'll go ahead and play it so that you can see what we have. Now it's a fine clip, but if we were using this at the start of an actual video project, it would be a little bit abrupt to simply have it start. And the same would hold true of this or any other clip being used at the end of a video project. Unless you're doing it for artistic purposes, if you just have a cold ending where the video suddenly goes to a black screen, it can be a little bit jarring. So down here in the timeline, I have the clip highlighted. And if I come up here and click on Fade, you'll see that it gives us a Fade In and a Fade Out option. By clicking, holding, and dragging, I can set these for whatever duration I'd like. And it just makes for a very nice gradual transition when the video starts. And I think that looks great. It's so easy to adjust, you can position these really wherever you want to. And if you end up using a duration that's much shorter, it will be a much quicker fade in or fade out. But let's just go ahead and keep these somewhere in this vicinity. And that's how easy it is to do a fade in or fade out in ClipChamp. Now the next tool I'd like to look at is under Filters. Now let me reposition the playhead so that we have something in the preview screen. And now all I need to do is hover and as I do so, you can see in the preview screen what each particular filter would do. For each one of these, when you click on it, you'll see there's an intensity control. You can go from one extreme to the other, or you can keep it in the middle, kind of a happy medium. And you'll notice that some of these filters are premium. Now right now, I'm using the free version of ClipChamp. So if you try to use anything that has this little diamond icon, it will tell you that you need to upgrade in order to use the content. And there are a lot of really interesting ones to pick from. Let me go ahead and close out of that one. I think this one is particularly interesting. Old Western kind of gives you almost like a sepia tone. And I think I'll just go ahead and keep Old Western in there for now. Now what I'd like to do here is go ahead and bring in another clip. I'll just position the playhead right here, and we have the clip highlighted. And I'll go ahead and click on Effects. And these are all the different options that you can pick from. You actually have to be playing the clip to really see how these effects work. Some will literally just flash the image on or off, or they'll spin the image. And you can experiment with them. This is kind of an interesting one, slow zoom. So I'll select it. Now let's see what happens here. So that can be a really nice dramatic way to add some extra flavor to your images. And you'll notice here that you can determine where you're zooming. So it defaults to the center of the picture. But let's change it to the upper left hand corner and see what that looks like. Another option you have is to actually vary the speed of the zoom. 
And if I were to increase that significantly, let's see what that would look like. It's a little weird, and you would probably never want to use it like that, so I would generally keep it set on the lower settings, but it's a nice way to just give a little bit more variety to what's being shown in the scene. Now, that's just one of the options that you can use. So if we highlight the clip and go back to Effects, I'm going to go in here and deselect the slow zoom. And I wanted to show you this one, which I find really interesting. This is the VHS option. And what's really fascinating here is you even get the grain in the tape playback. And it really does look very much like it was recorded on a VHS cassette a long time ago. So it's really up to you. You can decrease the grain. And there is also an intensity control. So it's really just down to whatever your own personal preference is. But again, another really interesting way to give some more variety to whatever is depicted in your clips. So I'd like to come over here and bring one last clip in. I'll go ahead and position the playhead so that we have the clip in our preview. Now I want to look at Adjust Colors. You can play around with Exposure, Contrast, Saturation, Temperature, and Transparency. What I find myself using the most is the Saturation. And it's really fascinating because depending on what kind of effect you're going for, you can get extremely brilliant and vibrant colors. Now playing with the temperature can change the overall feel. And sometimes you may want to balance temperature and saturation together to give a particularly unique look to your clip. But it's an easy way to change what the clip looks like, and it can really influence the overall mood and feel of your entire project. Now, this happens to be an extremely short clip. Let's watch it here, and I'll show you. It's a nice clip, but it goes by really quickly. So one of the interesting tools that we have is speed. And if I come up here and select that, our clip defaults to playing at normal speed, just one time speed. We can increase the speed, and that's something that you might want to do if you have a clip that's longer, maybe two to three minutes showing slowly moving clouds. You could increase the speed so that you could see the cloud formations quickly changing. But for something like this, it can be beneficial to go in the opposite direction and actually decrease the playback speed so that the clip is longer. So I'll just come back here and let's see what that looks like. It comes down to really being an issue of utility, deciding what works best for the length of the clip, and then also your own artistic vision. I kind of like having it at this speed because it just is a really nice dramatic effect of the wind blowing through their fur and also blowing these tall grasses here. It's nice too because you can combine effects. So if I wanted to, I could even do a fade out here on this clip just like we did on the others. So it's a nice option to be able to combine editing tools to achieve the desired result. Well, I just had wanted to take a couple of minutes today to take a look at these. They really are excellent tools, and if you experiment with them, I'm sure you'll find combinations that work for you. If today's video was helpful for you, would you please give it a like? And in the comments below, let me know if you've ever used any video editing tools when you assemble a project of your own. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to Valor XL. We publish content on a regular basis, and our primary goal is to help small businesses to truly thrive. Thanks again for joining me today. Please come back for our next installment, and remember at Valor XL, we're committed to helping you do smart work. I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye for now.